Hey guys, it's been a year since I made my first video on this DAC board and since I pretty much put it into this position here that I have it now. I mean, we've done, we've painted the wall since then and the biggest change I've made to the DAC board is that I switched from using a Windows-based PC over to using a DAC board CPU. This is the version four here and I'm just gonna do a quick comparison to the mini uh, because it's not for everybody I found out because this was the first one I bought. So anyway, let me give a quick overview of my DAC board. Basically, we have it set up and I've got a fake calendar here with different events just to have it filled with something. I have it set up with a kind of an agenda and then also a running calendar that you can scroll through. Um, we have it mounted on the wall. I've got some LED lights behind it that are powered by USB on the monitor. I will say, you do need to be careful which monitor you buy on this. Um, I'm using the one that, when touchscreen functionality first came out on the DAC board, this is the monitor they used to test with. Um, it's the ViewSonic TD2465 24 inch monitor. You wanna be careful when you pick a monitor that it has ports facing the right direction. You can kinda of see them back there if it'll focus. Uh, the ports are facing out instead of back. That way you can get it closer. Uh, I have it on a, a pretty low cost wall mount there. And what I did is I tacked together a bunch of V pine boards and then kind of whitewashed it with paint. I put on these one foot adhesive cork boards um, and those are actually slightly painted too. I wanted to say I just diluted the paint out, painted them and then wiped it off before it dried. Kind of made them a little bit of a color that blended a little better. So anyway, this is using the CPU V4 first here. I just want to show how responsive it is. There is a new CPU 5. This, um, this one runs $80. This one I got for $130, but it looks like it's $150 now. Maybe it'll go on sale, I don't know. Um, and then there's a newer version that's even more powerful, that's $180. Um, so if you see, if you think you're going to have more widgets than I do, then maybe jump for that one. One of the biggest upgrades in switching to the DAC PC is that you're getting rid of Windows. Um, the mini PC I was running before was, it was like a Celeron. It was a couple years old. It wasn't anything special, but the catch on that is that it uses more power. Windows is more power hungry. It'll do Windows updates when you don't want it to. It'll, you know, you'll come out in the morning and it will be the Windows login screen instead. And then the biggest thing that I think is probably going to save quite a bit of money over time here is that these DAC PCs can be set up to turn off and on at certain times of the day. So at like 11 o'clock at night, this shuts off and then at like 5.45 in the morning, it turns back on. And in doing that, it's turning the backlight on the screen off. It's, um, I will say the uh, USB port here for the lights, that does stay on even when the monitor's off or on standby. So it's using a little bit of electricity there, but nothing compared to running a Windows computer 24 seven and it should help the monitor last longer too. So anyway, where was I? So we were gonna show using this CPU, this is about how responsive it is. I have little hidden buttons on here and that's another benefit to having a touch screen is that um, on the free plan, I think you can only have one DAC screen, but if you pay $5 a month, you can get two and that'll let you have a second one, which in this case, just for testing, it's pretty much the same one, but I added like my Nest thermostat in the living room and more of a photo background with just one calendar. And then I made a third one here just for testing. <laughs> and that's not how I get to it. Ah, oh, that's right, I hid the button up here. This is literally just plopping a bunch of widgets on here. Um, so we had the hearth before, which was a 27 inch device. We ended up returning that really quick. We hated that thing. The uh, hardware was great. The price was great on it. 27 inch touchscreen was nice, but the software just was so bare bone and like ugly on the eyes. And um, the calendar wasn't working good for us. And um, anyway, we returned it. We returned it, switched to this. Um, 
And one of the things that didn't work until recently was a reoccurring to-do list for like chores and things. And I get that question a lot on my old video. So I plop the widgets on here. This is using the to-doist functionality or widget on here. So that's a separate thing you can have on your phone to add and remove items. Uh, it let me put reoccurring things on here like brushing teeth, eating breakfast. Uh, I have some test things here. You can touch them. It crosses them off. Eventually it'll refresh and they'll just disappear. Uh, and then they'll be back tomorrow if they're a reoccurring thing. An issue I was having before when we first tried to do this is that you'd cross things off and then they'd come back like three or four minutes later. So that seems to be working now. Um, you can have news where you scan a QR code. Uh, I've got air quality here. That's, um, I think that's my thermostat in the living room again, along with humidity, it looks like, and uh, another weather widget. Oh, and you can do stocks. There's so There are so many widgets you can have on this, and it really lets you do a lot more than something like the hearth does. The only downside is you don't get that nice frame. You've got um, a monitor with slightly different bezels on each side. It's a little bit thicker, you can see, on this side versus this side, but from a distance. I think it looks pretty good in our kitchen. So let me switch over to the lower powered DAC PC Mini and I'll just show you kind of how responsive it is in comparison. If you don't have a touch screen, you're probably all set using this. I think it's the touch screen that was the most unbearable part. Let me switch over and I'll be right back. While this is turning on here, um, what we ended up doing for wiring this is that we have an extension cord going down into this cabinet. And then we usually have the power brick for it in this cabinet that comes out and it, we literally just let it dangle back here. And you can see it's a little dirty back there because the trash can's so close. Let me see if I can get a better angle on this. Did cut a hole in the wall and basically run it straight up into the middle of this. Uh, actually not in the middle, off to the side. You can see it's coming out right where the cables are for this monitor. So that hides the power cord. Not that it would be too bad to have it just showing a little bit, but. All right, we're back. I've given it some time to stabilize. We're now running off the mini PC. Which was interesting is it actually was running with it unplugged from the wall, just running off the monitor USB um, touchscreen connection there. So that was kind of cool. Um, anyway, let's see how much responsiveness there is. Not too responsive. You go slow, sorry. I was not watching where the camera's pointing there for a second. It's just slow. And then we've got the shortcut to switch to another DAC board screen. Let's see how long that takes. It did it, just slow, and let's see if it's responsive yet. See, it's a little more responsive on this page, maybe because there's fewer widgets. And then let's go to that third one with the task list. Change this one much quicker, because probably because there's no calendar load. Can still check off chores. So 
So the slowness wasn't the main reason we got rid of this DAC PC though. Um, the other issue I was having, and I contacted support about it, is that I usually have Google Photos cycling instead of this just generic uh, landscape wallpapers. The issue I was having with the mini PC is that it was bringing up error messages and the screen would just, I think it would go black. Maybe I have a screenshot of it I can put on the screen here. But um, that was requiring like constant restarts and uh, customer support for DAC boards said that I might have been having the photo update interval too short. I think I had it set to maybe one minute. Um, setting it to 20 minutes, I think, something like that, um, reduced it a lot, but still there'd be times where I'd come around the corner here into the kitchen and it would be on the error message screen. Switching over to this PC, I've got it back to one minute between photos and don't have any of that issue. So keep that in mind if you're not just using it for touchscreen, but if you're having a lot of photos switching back and forth, um, you might want the more powerful one. So there is the V5 version of this that's out now. I don't quite think there's a need for that unless you're starting to have issues with the V4, but if you don't have one yet to know, I guess just go by what I have here maybe. Um, if you're going to have more than two calendars, maybe that's a good instance to... Um, spend more for the more powerful one, or if you just want it to last longer maybe before it starts to slow down, especially since um, there may be new things added in the future. But that's about it for the comparison here. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. I, I will link to my other video too because there's a lot of questions and answers in that one in the comments. And then I'll put a link to this specific monitor below and I think maybe there's a 27 inch version. If so, I'll link that too. Then you're kind of more in line with what the hearth offers. Uh, and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.